Okay, we are on Tav Zayin Amad Aleph at the Mishnah, halfway down the page, 2782. So we've been talking about times when a woman would be captured and would be prohibited to her husband, whether he's Israel or more likely when he's a Kohen, because the rules are strict for a Kohen. Um, a city that was, we say, Kavshua, conquered, but it's, uh, I guess, first they laid siege to it, and then they conquered it, all the Kohanos. So, meaning the wives of Kohanim are prohibited to their husbands, because we're worried that... They that they may have been raped by a non-Jew, and and, and a uh, a woman who would even would be raped by a non-Jew would have a status of a of a zona from the Torah, and a Kohen isha zona v'chalal loyikach who's not allowed to be married to a zona, so uh, she wouldn't be per, remain permitted to her husband the Kohen, but a woman who's not married to a Kohen uh, that doesn't prohibit her from staying married to her husband. I don't know if this is pertinent, but uh, sometimes there are things in the Gemara that, well, frankly, never happen, and they're there to teach us about. Yeah, uh, Gemara says it about a few, uh, just a few, uh, a small number of things like uh, yeah. uh, Ben Saramora or Irani Dachas. So this one, <laughs> this obviously did happen, mm -hmm. but. Let's go back, you know, a couple thousand years. Mm -hmm. um, it, it could be much worse than this. Much worse. Mm -hmm. You're not talking about just a, a few women. Right. You could be talking about hundreds of thousands in, in uh, you know, when the temple was destroyed or something like that. And, and Well, again, that would be if, if so the whole city was, con the country was, conquered, but that doesn't mean that there weren't villages and stuff that weren't necessarily involved in the fighting. And, uh, the, the temple was destroyed the first time? The, the, well, the second time, too. I mean, the, the, are you kidding? They, they, they like destroyed a lot of the villages. They exiled uh, all, all, the, all the people. It right, was but really bad. It was really bad, but again, let's say, talking about the first base of Mikdash, it was over a period of at least 11 years. And even more than that, because of if you want to start about when, um, what's his name, um, from Ashur, uh, Sancheirev. So that was earlier, even. And then the process of the Gaulus of the Malach Yisrael versus Malach Yehuda was, what, 11 years? In the time of the first basic edition, that's why Achashverosh made a mistake in his calculation. But when the 70 years was up, he calculated from the Gallus of the Malchi Israel and not the Gallus of Malchi Huda. <clears throat> but what I'm saying is that, let's say, um, let's say they would have they would have besieged the capital city, and then overrun it. It doesn't mean that they took every village and city on the way to the capital city, necessarily. It could have, might not have. Um, so that doesn't mean that every uh, Cohen and his wife had to had to be divorced. Okay, it was likely that there would have been a large numbers, but that doesn't mean every. Because it's true, the country was, as a whole, was conquered, but that doesn't mean that every single village had been. The army went through every single village. That's how I would look at it. Okay. But if there was Adam, there was witnesses that they were not uh, secluded. Um, or uh, or defiled by the Goyim, even if this, if, even if it was a slave, a male or female slave who was giving the testimony, uh, we believe them. But in this case, no one is believed on their, for themselves. So the woman isn't uh, believed for herself. Now, this, this this doesn't contradict the Gemara we saw a week or two ago 
uh, because that's because in that case was she said nishbesu torani. She said I was kidnapped. Here we know that they were besieged. So her saying that so and again to say that I was kid captive, but they never were secluded with me. That's a pashaser pashahita. She would never have told us that she was kidnapped. We wouldn't have known that. So the fact that she told us something bad gives her more credibility that to her when she says that she was not defiled. But in this case, everyone knows that that city was um, was was uh, surrounded and then uh, taken over. Now we'll see a, another hat. Is that in the next mission or is it in this Gemara? We're going to see a hatter in the Gemara here, but what about if, let's say, and this happened, let's say, after September 11th, Remember, there were people who happened to go on vacation on September 10th, and people didn't know about it, and they and they worked in 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 uh, in the World Trade Center real close, and their friends couldn't find them, didn't know they were on vacation. They thought that they were missing because they were in the building when it collapsed, and then it ends up that they just had gone out of town the day before, and they were fine. So, what if we, uh, you know, I, this I don't know. The Gemara didn't talk about it, but. Um, Let's say the city of City X was held captive, but this Mr. and Mrs. Cone had gone out of town before that siege started. So what level of of uh, of testimony would we need to for them to say, oh, I wasn't in that town at all at that time because I had gone out of town or I went out of town for a wedding or, you know, whatever. And so I wasn't there. So this halacha wouldn't apply to me because I wasn't in the city that had been overrun by the by the non-Jewish army. Okay, so the Gemara says, or a minhu, I'll ask a contradiction, Balasha, Shabala Air, so some type of group of soldiers that came to a city, Bishas Shalom, Chavios Psuchos, Chavios Psuchas Asuros, Stumos Mutaros. If they came when there was, so, um, when there was peace, so remember, it's important to realize that we have whichever amendment it is that uh, we're not going to have to quarter troops. But in the time of the Gemara, in the time of of Europe, uh, throughout the centuries, if 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 uh, soldiers came to a city, people would have to feed and and uh, and house the soldiers. So if they came in a time of peace, so Rashi says that this Balashas, this this group of soldiers. They search for anything hidden. So it seems that Rabbi Kiva Eger feels that Rashi isn't, that it doesn't mean that they come, they're not the KGB coming to, to look for if people have any secrets. Rabbi Kiva Eger seems to understand Rashi that the word balashes comes from the word vaychapes, to search, because but when, because uh, in the Pasuk, in the end of Miketz, when, when uh, Yosef had the, his goblet planted in Binyamin's bag, it says, Vaychapes bagadol hechel, uh, he, he searched, Vaychapes, and he started with the oldest one, with Reuven, and he ended in Binyamin, and they found the goblet in Binyamin's bag. So uh, Rabbi Kibager points out that the unkelis, the Targum term for Vaychapes is Uvalash. So the word Balashas is, well, the, yeah, so part of the, these soldiers were ones who would search for things. So barrels of wine that were in the city, if they were open, you're not allowed to eat them because or drink from them because uh because uh in the in those those, those were pagan goyim and if they had an open bottle of wine they would have offered some of the wine they would have spilled it over for their for one of their gods or m multiple of their gods if they were pagan. So what no, so just, 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 we don't have the question yet. So let's just finish the case and then we'll see what the question is. Okay. So if they came in a time of peace, so any open barrels are prohibited and closed barrels are allowed. We're not worried that they would have opened up a closed barrel. So if you had a sealed barrel of wine, it's still kosher. It doesn't fall under the problem of stam yenam or, or yay nesach that they had poured from it to their God. Bishas Muhammad, if they came to a town during war, Eilva Eilam Mutaros Lafish and Penaila Nesach. But both uh, um but if they came in the time of war, 
even the open bottles, these and these, the closed bottle barrels and the open barrels are both permitted because they didn't have time to offer a wine libation to their guy. So the question is, if they came in time of war, we're not worried that they would have uh, poured a little bit of wine. It doesn't take that much time as an offering for their God. So the question is, how come we're worried that they would have uh, defiled the women in the city if it's time of war? That's the question. So if Armish is time of war, they would have defiled women. And from this Bryce, uh, these soldiers in the time of war wouldn't even have time to pour a libation from an open barrel. So Amr of Mari, live all yesh p'nai, l'nasachim p'nai. But Murray answers that they find time uh, to defile women, but to pour a wine, a libation to their God, they don't have time. So Rashi says the reason is because, uh, I mean, he doesn't say the word Yetzirah, but their inclination to, to defile women is stronger than their desire to give a wine libation. Rabbi Yitzhak Bar Elazar Bishmei the Chizkiah Amar. Rabbi Yitzhak Bar Elazar, in the name of Chizkiah, gave a different explanation to the seeming contradiction. Kan becharkom shol osa malchus. Kan becharkom shol malchus. Shol malchus acheres. It depends who the soldiers are. If they're uh, the soldiers are from the ruling region of that city or not. Shol osa malchus. Excuse me. So if it's from an invading army, they they won't be careful. That you know they will defile the women. But if it's from the soldier from that same country, they're not, uh, you know, so this would be more likely to be the troop. They are, well, they're not, they're going to want to keep the population, they're not going to want the population to be mad at the government. So they're not going to rape the women. So Rashi seems to imply that it's obviously you wouldn't invade your own city, but let's say there's two cities close to each other. And so you're going to the next city over. So it's relatively close. So because it's relatively close to your country, you don't want to get the people too mad at you anyway. You're going to conquer it, but you don't, you're not going to cause bad blood with the people. Right, right. You're close enough. So you, you want them to, to be... You know, right. So they you don't want they don't want you to be all mad at 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 the at your their new uh, uh, leader uh, government who who conquered them. My uncle told me I forgot. So the, by the border of Lithuania and Latvia, there was a city. Oh, Zamol, which was in Lithuania, there was a city nearby called like Bo Boy, Boyd or Boyk or something. And so that was Latvia. So if there'd be pogroms in Latvia, the Jews would run to Zamol in Lithuania. And if there were pogroms in Lithuania, they would run to to the city uh boy or whatever it was called so they were close enough to each other that depending on the political situations the jews would go to here or to there so that's i think that's the type of thing that we're talking about uh here so if if this if the they conquered a faraway city they didn't care you know if the people hated them or not but if it was relatively close they wouldn't mistreat them so obviously they would charge them taxes and stuff, but uh, you know if it's there's a I think Rashi in the Megillah in Megillah Sester says that um, Achashverosh and other kings used to charge most of their taxes to faraway uh, countries or in provinces, but because if they would charge the taxes right locally, the people might rebel. You know they wouldn't like the high taxes. So, and then Mordechai later made a, an equal tax. It didn't matter if you were close or far. So the idea of keeping the people close to you happy, we see that idea from what Rashi says in the Gilsester.
Well, now that it's only a few hours away from anywhere, they should keep the taxes low everywhere. Or they should be like communist Russia and charge only 13% flat tax. But they didn't have any uh, deductions for uh, charitable donations. No cars for kids. So shall also machos nami. So then the Gemara says, shall also machos nami yevsher de lo ar kadminayu. But even if it's from a, a a nearby country and they they want to keep the people happy, you're going to say that not one soldier is going to go defile uh, a woman there. So I'm Rabbi Huda Mishmol Kimishem Mishmaros Rosewezu because it's a place where everyone each group is in view of another group. These smaller squads of soldiers are in view of, of other views. So if someone would go, they, people would see that they're not at their post. So they, that's what keeps them at their post. I the Gemara says, the after the name of Porta. Okay, but maybe someone is going to doze off at their post, so the person the next post over will not be, uh, there won't be eyes on him. So maybe he can go cause trouble and mayhem then. Um, Rav Levi could go to Maharle, Lamasa, Shushilsa, Vikelba, Vigabza, Vavza. Because they had surrounded the city with iron chains. So if someone would run there, um, it would make noise. And they had dogs and geese uh, would also, they'd hear the noise. They would start making noise too. And gavsa is uh, some type of traps and uh, booby traps to, to trip people up, whatever. So therefore, it'll be so loud, people won't be able to, the, the soldiers won't be able to fall asleep either. So in this case, it is likely, according to this answer, Rabbi Lazar, Rabbi Yitzhak, Rabbi Lazar, Chizkiya, there, there is a likelihood that one soldier could have started defiling people. So it has to be a situation where there's all this... Uh, Troops are stationed within view of each other, and there's all this noise uh, coming from around the city, so it will keep people awake also. Okay, the second medium wide line, Amr of Abba Barzavda, Pligi Bar Rabbi Yehuda Nasiya of Rabbana. Rabbi Abba Barzavda said there was machlokas between Rabbi Yehuda Nasiya, that he was, I think, a grandson of Rabbi Yehuda Hanasi. So he was a, a, uh, I think he was a grandson of Rabbi Yehuda Nasi, so he was an Amora and the Rabbanan. Chad Amar Kan Bekarkum Shel Osa Malchus. The one of Kan Bekarkum Shel Malchus Acheres Lo Kash Lev Lo Midi. So they explained the the difference between our Mishnah and this other Brisa as being a a, a nearby uh, uh, soldiers of a nearby kingdom versus the soldiers of a faraway kingdom. So the faraway kingdom, we are worried that the woman will be defiled, and from a nearby one, they're not. But they weren't concerned about. Um, one particular soldier running, uh, you know, separating from the army and defiling women. But the other Amora did have all these other questions like we had in the name of Chizkiya. And they answered that the city was, there was so much noise on the outskirts of the city, so the soldiers were always in view of each other and no soldiers would have dozed off. So uh, even according to what we just said, to explain Chizkiya with all the noise, we're not sure who said what, whether the Rabbanan required it or Rabbi Huda Nasiya required it, but some Amorim didn't even require that. So now we basically have three answers to the contradiction of our, between our mission and the Brisa. Rav, Rav Mari's answer is that is that uh, from their Rashi says from their Yetzirah they will. Um, The Ramari's answer is bad for the women in the city, especially the wives of Kohanim. That they, they won't have time, they'll, they'll find time to ravage women, but they won't have time to uh, to, uh, to, off, to pour some wine for their Avodah Zarah. Rav Yitzhak Bar Elaz Mishmei says, we are worried, but if they're spread out and within sight to each other and the city is spread out, is surrounded with all this noise, then they're not going to nap. So, so we know that not even one can escape. And then either Rabbi Yehuda Nesia or the Rabbanon were not concerned about that. 
even if it was from a from a close city, that was enough. We're not worried that that uh, one will separate from the group and 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 a different soldier will doze off and not notice that the other one separated. So it seems that we have three answers so far. So here's a, a very important heter. Rav Idi Bar Avin said the name of Yitzhak Bar Ashiyan. If there's any hiding space, if there's at least one hiding space in that city, it's going to save all the Kohanos because we could say that they were that, that that they were hiding in there, so uh, they wouldn't have been ravaged by anyone or defiled by anyone. By Rabbi Yirmiya, in Machzekes Al Achas Mahu, Rabbi Yirmiya asked if it only holds one the the hiding place was like Saddam's a spider spider hole, only room for one one person. Would that also save all the Kohanos in the city? It's not possible that they all would have been there at the same time, or even if they would have taken turns, but someone would not have been in there when a soldier would have gone on his uh, uh, ravaging rampage. Would we say that each woman was here? Um... Or we don't say this. And we're worried that they were defiled. So so how is this case different from a famous case that Gemara talks about two different roads? If there were two roads, one was Tame and one was Tahor because there was uh, a, a, a body buried on one of them. The so one of that, so one Kohen or even not Kohen went on one road and then dealt with Tahor things. Now, the main thing is for a, a Kohen deals with Truma, the Truma has to remain Tahor. Someone who's Yisrael, who's um, careful about Tahor, who's a, what we call him, a, a hover, um, he eats even his regular food Tahor, but if it became Tame, it's not such a big deal. So it's more like you talk about a Kohen who is dealing with uh, with truma, pure truma stuff afterwards. So one of these people definitely went over the road that has the grave on it, would have become Tame. But so if each one asked by uh, uh, an independent Shiloh said, I went between, you know, A and B, and I don't know if I took the 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 left fork in the road or the right fork in the road. So I don't know if I went on the Tame road. For each one, we can say that they're Tahoe. But if I ask at the same time, Tameos, we have to say they're both coming because it's it's not possible that that both of them are Tahor. So we have to worry that each of them are coming. And the, the Tahoros, the, the Truma that they dealt with is coming. Now, the reason for this, how could they how can we how can we say that they're both Tahor? The answer is is that there's a principle that if there's suffix tuma b'shusarabim is tahor. If there's a doubt, if you were if something is tame or not in the, in a public area, we say it's it's not tame. But if it's in a b'shusayachet in a private area, we we'd say the suffix it is tame. That's the rule. So because it's a road, which is a public area, suffix tuma, we say it's uh, it's tahor. Now th one of these guys definitely crossed it, but since we don't know each one. We can be lenient and say he went on the other one, and using the rule of Suffolk, that uh, that uh, each one is tahor. But when they ask at the same time, it's impossible that they're both tahor. So we have to say that they're both tummy. So the food that they touched has a status of being tummy. Rabbi Yossi, remember, Rabbi Yossi says, They're both tummy, even if they ask separately. But Amar Rav, and Rav says, "We tame Rabbi Yochanan." Some say Rabbi Yochanan, but Vasachas diber kotmein. That Rabbi Yossi and the and the Tanakama, Rabbi Huda, hold that if they ask at the same time, they're both Tameh. But even if they ask one after another, you know, Ruvain asked the Shaila, so he, you got a, a Psak Tahor. Right after he left, Shimon came in and asked the same Shaila. I went between A and B, and I, I think I took the, I, I, I don't know which road I took, but obviously it wasn't the same road as that guy because I didn't see him when I was coming. He'd say, okay, you're Tahor. Uh, the only machlokas is where you're coming to ask for himself and for the other one. 
Reb Yossi compares it to asking at the same time. So we say they're both Tameh. But Rabbi Yehuda compares it to asking um, one after another, and therefore they're both Tower. Wow. So, so this Mishnah is, so there's two roads, and there's a grave on one of them. And you went and you didn't realize which road you went on. And then you touched Truma. So did you make the Truma Tame or not? So there's Machlok Sinra. So and two people went and they definitely went on different on the different one went on one the left road, one went on the right road. So one of them is Tame, one of them is not. So the Mishnah said. Rabbi Huda says, if each one asks by themselves, it's Tahor. If they ask at the same time, it's Tame. Rabbi Yossi said, well, either way, they're Tame. And Rava and some said Rabbi Yochanan said they refined what it meant that last but what the Machlokas was. That if they both ask individually, even Rabbi Yossi agreed that both, excuse me, if they ask at the same time, even Rabbi Huda agrees. Well, Rabbi Huda, he explicitly says it, your tummy. If they ask uh, this one after the other. So Ruben asked, he left the Rav, and immediately after Shimon asked, they're both Tahor. The Machlokas is, if Reuven asked his own Shaila and Shimon Shaila to the Rav at the same time. So Rabbi Yossi compares it to them both asking at the same time, and therefore they're both Tame, meaning, and the the, the, the Truma that they touch is Tame. And Rabbi Huda says it's like Zachar Zeh, and both of them are Tahor. And in our, in our case, in our Mishnah, uh, uh, of maybe they were hiding, maybe there was a th there was a, a hiding space big enough for only one woman in the town. So can we assume that all oh, Rabbi Yirmi had asked? Uh, can we assume that each one was in there? Uh, so therefore, none of them were defiled. That was Rabbi uh, Yirmiya's question. So Bahachanami in this case, Kevin to Shirlu Lukulu dami. So since we're monitoring all of them, this is like basachas. At the it's at the same time, and and both according to in in this mishnah, both according to Rabbi Yehuda and both according to Rabbi Yossi, when everyone's asking the shaila at the same time, they're 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 puzzled. So how come we're saying in this case the women who when there was a hiding place of, that was big enough for one, they would be tahoros? If the case of the mishnah here about the two paths. And one of them is definitely Tame. Uh, everyone agrees if the Shaila was asked at the they came to ask the Shaila at the same time, we consider them both Tame. So how come this case of the woman, the the uh, Aisha's coin, is different than that case of the of the two paths? No, you can't say that they're compar compar uh, comparable because definitely in the case of the two people, one of them went on a path on the on the wrong path. But here, we don't know that any of the women were ever uh, defiled. We just know that there was, that it was besieged and overrun by non-Jewish soldiers. We, we don't know that any woman actually was defiled or not. So therefore, we could be more lenient in this case of the, uh, of the Kohanos uh, and the soldiers versus the, pay, the case of the two paths. Um, boy, Ravashi, Rashi asked, if a woman says, I didn't hide, but I wasn't uh, defiled either, what's what's it in? Me, I'm Renan. Do we say, we turn to Chavzayin Oed Beis, Mali Lashakir, do we basically apply the Pesha also Pesha Hita, the Megu idea? If she, if, uh, if, um, Because if she, the best, what was the best thing she could have said? I was hiding. If, she, But she says, I wasn't hiding, but I wasn't defiled. From the fact that she gave a, a worse claim, does that add credibility like the Megu, the Pesha Asur Shepeli either? Oh, Dilma Lam Rinan. Or maybe we wouldn't say a Pesha Asur here. Humay Shnami, Humay Sadu Gavra. But how is this Shaila different than an incident from a certain man? The Agarbe Chamer Lechavre. He rented a donkey to someone else. Amar Lei. 
Don't go on the road next to the river Pekod because there's water there and it might cause the donkey to die. Go on the nearest road that doesn't have water. And then he went on the the, the road of the river Pekod, which the guy said not to go, and the donkey did that. So he came to Rava, Amarle, in he said, I did go on the road of the river code, but there was no water and the donkey died for a different reason. So I shouldn't be liable to pay back the rented donkey company for the dead donkey. He didn't take out the insurance on the rented donkey. No, so the, it's not that we're comparing. We're complaining. We're comparing the claim that he made in that case to the claim over here. Because Amma Rava, Rava says, Madli Lashakir. We say, why should he have lied? Meaning, if he because he could have said, I didn't go on the river, on the on the road of the river code at all. From the fact that he said he went, which was something bad. It shows that he didn't follow the terms of his of his rent a donkey lease. But he said there was no water. We should believe in that there was no water. So Rava said that we would apply it. But Abai said to him, We don't say this this claim of or this Megu thing in a case of witnesses. Not that they're literally witnesses, but everyone knows that there's frequently water on this road. So um so he has no credibility to say there was no water. Since there's so often water, we're not saying that he was lying that there wasn't water, but it doesn't give him enough credibility halachically to say to be believed when he says there was no water. So in this case, when the woman, when we know that there was a uh, a non-Jewish troop had besieged and then over on the city, the fact that she says lonach basi that would ruin her credibility to say um, that she wasn't defiled. I mean, when we have a certain level of knowledge that this thing happens commonly, we don't, according to Abaye, says uh, we don't apply this idea of this logic of um, of a pesha or a peshahita. So hachi hashta. The Gemara says, "Well, what do you what do you, what do you mean over here?" Hasan vade ika edem to ika maya. There, there's definitely witnesses that there was water on the road. Hacha vade itme. Here. Was she certainly defiled? Chashasha, who were only concerned that maybe she was defiled, and in the case of only the chashash, that maybe she was defiled, we do believe her with this claim to say, I wasn't hidden, but I wasn't defiled either. So we try to make the question, and it doesn't apply. I mean, the comparison isn't good. In what uh, about Sota? Yeah. But Sota is a voluntary case. She voluntarily secluded herself. Okay. Um, two dots. If there's witnesses, even an Evid or even a Shifcha, that say that she wasn't defiled by the non Jews, they are believed. So the Gemara says, Afilo Shifcha Didame Hemni. That implies even if it's her own shifcha, she'd be believed. Now, her own shifcha, let's say, you know, her personal valet. Near the Lahavdal, La the queen had this, has a special, uh, you know, a special, I forgot what it's called. You know, so even her personal valet, for a man, it would be called a valet. For, for a woman, it's called something else. So even her own shifcha from this Mishnah implies would be believed. Or Minhu, but that's a contradiction from in Gittin. So the halacha is, is that once a man gave a get to his now ex-wife, they're not allowed to be secluded uh, at all. And if they do seclude, they need another get. So the woman, after she received the get, she cannot uh, be secluded do yichud with her ex-husband unless there's aid in there, because then it's not secluded anymore. There's someone in the room. Even if it's an avid, even if it's a, a, a female slave, except from her own shifcha because she 
she's so close to her shivka, her shivka is almost like, so this isn't what the Gemara says, but the way that I would say it, she her shivka, she's so used to her shivka, shivka is like the piece of the furniture, so she could act as if the shivka is not there. So the shivka isn't a valid uh, shomeris, so we say, uh, against uh, the seclusion happening with her uh, now ex-husband. So how come in that case, after the get, we do not trust her own shivcha, but in this case, we, we do trust her shivcha? Doesn't make sense. So I'm Rapapi Bishvuya Hikilu. Rapapi says for a case of a captive woman, they were makil and they believed even her own shivcha, but normally we wouldn't. Rapapa Amar, Haba Shivcha Dida, Haba Shivcha Dide. There's a difference if it's her shivcha or his shivcha. So if it's her, her shivcha wouldn't have any namanas in either case, in the case of the Gittin or in the case here of, of, uh, of when the city was overrun. But if it was her husband's slave or someone else's shivcha, that shivcha would be believed. So meaning a shivcha had, would be believed in this case, but just not her shivcha. So Shifcha says that that woman wasn't wasn't uh, wasn't defiled by the non-Jews. That Shifcha is believed. But if it's the 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 slave talking about her own mi mistress, she's not believed. So the Gemara asks, so Shifcha did not let me Why isn't her own Shifcha believed? Hakani Eidano made al atzmo a Shifcha did not There's a general rule: a person's not allowed to testify for themselves. But the Shifcha is someone else. So why shouldn't a shivcha be believed? So the Gemara says, shivcha sanami kasmadami, because her shivcha is an extension of herself. It says she's like herself. So because, I guess, her role and her duties are so close to, to her mistress, so she's like an extension. So just like a person isn't believed on themselves, their close personal slave or valet type of slave is not believed for them either. Rav Ashi, Amar Rav Ashi gives a third answer. Hava Hava Shifcha Dida. This Mishnah, our Mishnah about the, the woman in the in the city that was overrun and the Gittin case are both talking about her Shifcha. The Shifcha Michzi Chazi Vashaska. But Shifchas, normally they see what goes on, but they keep their mouths shut. But in the case of Gittin, where if she doesn't say anything, She's not believed. Meaning to stay quiet and not say anything, which if she would say something would be bad to her, her mistress, that would be a problem. So if she keeps quiet, everything's okay. Well, that's not considered doing something. You know, sometimes you need to do something to show something. The fact that she's quiet doesn't prove anything in this case because she's being quiet to save her, her own mistress. But here in our Mishnah, if she would stay quiet, that would be bad for her mistress. If no one speaks up and says she wasn't defiled, then she'll be for, for, for prohibited to her Kohen, uh, to, to her Kohen husband. So the fact that her shifcha says she was not defiled, we would believe her be because, um, because normally the, the slave would be quiet. And the fact that she says something shows that it's true because if uh, what for her not to say anything is the normal way. So in the case of getting for her not to say anything, we we don't know one way or the other. Therefore, that the wife would need a new get. But in this case, if she would quiet, it would be bad for her for her mistress. So therefore, um, the fact that she so she's allowed to testify that her mistress was not um, uh, defiled by the non-Jewish soldiers. Well, Two, two points. Yeah. Because how come she allowed to testify? She's a woman and she's a slave. So it seems. No, no, no. How come she testified? Because the main thing is that this isn't so. This isn't real aidus. Real aidus is to take away money, let's say, from someone, right? So that she wouldn't be qualified for that. And also, real aidus needs two aidus. But in the case of it, for for Naguna to be allowed to to know for sure that her husband died, for sure. 
and cases like this, we said one witness is enough, even someone who's not a Jewish, and, and even a woman is, is believed. So now the Gemara asks, Hachi Hashta, Asim Shakra, maybe in this case, if she speaks up, she's going to lie to save her, her, her mistress. So if she says nothing, the mistress is going to be prohibited to her husband. So maybe she would speak up and lie to say, to, to help her mistress. So the Gemara says, Tarki Lavi, she's not going to do two things. To speak up itself is a little bit against her nature. So if she speaks up, it would be, uh, she would be believed. But to lie is something that's also against her nature. So we're not worried that there, she's going to do two things that were both, when I say nature, I don't literally mean nature, but, but she's not going to do two unusual things. So if she says something, we could believe her because her natural thing, it would be to stay quiet. So the fact that she sa says that she doesn't stay quiet gives her credibility. We're not worried that she's going to, uh, to not stay quiet and then say something that's not the truth. You had the Mari Bar Isik because there was a similar incident of Mari Bar Isik. And some say it was Hanabar Isik. They had a brother who came from Beis Choza. So Amar Aba. So the brother came and he says, our, you know, our father died and give me my share of the inheritance. It was a younger brother. Amar Lei Lo Mari says, I don't know, I don't know you. You have to, you know, I don't believe that you're my little brother. So I'm not going to give you anything. Also commander of Chista. So the brother went to Ravchista, Amar Lei, Shaper Kamerlach. Uh told him that he's he has a good point. Dixiv lay, Dixiv, because it says, Vayakir Yosef is a Kiru. That when the brothers were taken before Yosef, he recognized them, they didn't recognize him. Why didn't they recognize him? Malamich Yotzabalchasimazakan. When Yosef was 17 and left him, he didn't have a beard yet. But here, at this time, he had a beard, so the brothers didn't recognize him. So it's true. So you had this brother. You knew he had the brother. But then when he was a kid, I think Tosos points out, that the, that the, that the, that the little brother was born here. He knew Mari Bar Isik or Hana Bar Isik knew that he had a little brother. But he doesn't know that this person really is his little brother. Because he would, the father moved out of town with him, and now he, as a kid, and now he came back as an adult with a beard. He doesn't recognize him. So, so, Amar Le, Rav Chista said, Zil Aite Sadi da da Achua. Go bring witnesses that you are his brother. People could say that Isik was your father, just like Isik was his father. So they know that you're his brother. So Amar Le, he said, Isli Sadi Umistafinu Minhe. I have witnesses, but they're afraid of him. He's a tough and this and that, and they're worried that he's going to intimidate them and maybe, um, you know, maybe treat them bad for making him lose this money from the estate that he had been, you know, using for himself. They got Amahu because he's a strong person. So they're not going to testify. I'm really the day. So then Rav Christa said to Mari, Zil Aitinu at the Lava Hufu. You have to bring witnesses that he's not your brother. If you could bring witnesses that he's not your brother, you don't have to pay him. Otherwise, we're going to assume that he is your brother. So Amar Lei, do you know how much me for all over He said, "Is this really the halacha? The halacha is if you take away from someone, you have to prove." So since he wants to take money that I had chazaka on from the estate of my father, he should have to bring witnesses that he is who he says he is because he's taking money away from me. So Amar Lei, Rav Chisda says, "Hachi Danina lach ulchul alma." This is how we judge for you and strong people like you. So, uh, so when it's someone strong, um, so the other people's witnesses would be uh, intimidated to testify. So in that case, we would actually make the stronger person testify that the other person is not who they say they are, and then he'd get to keep the money. So so hashdanami also mishakri. So the Gemara says. Maybe Mari will bring false witnesses who are going to lie and say, no, this is not Mari's brother. So since we're so since Mari, as we know, is intimidates people, why isn't he going to get to either strong people like him to not tell the truth or other people that he can intimidate for them to testify falsely? So the Gemara says, Tarki lo Avdi. If Chista didn't, didn't feel that they would do two things wrong.
the Rashi has something here. I don't fully understand it, but it's, I'm sure the Rashi is clear. I, I just don't understand it. We're worried that maybe the, because what if they go, go they go to base then, and the Dayanim say, you know, you know, so what do you want to tell us? And they're like, oh, well, we're really not sure, so we're not going to say anything. So there is a possibility. It's a police escorting uh, an ambulance. So either it's a criminal in the ambulance or it's someone important. Or, uh... So like in that case, we're not... Uh... So someone who, who might conceal testimony is not also going to give false testimony. So it's just like there, we're not worried about doing two things wrong. We're not worried that um, this the the woman's personal valet uh, uh, maidservant is going to do two unusual things to to break her silence and then say something not true when she's when she breaks her silence. tonight. Let's say that this topic is really a machlokas tonight. That uh, the testimony to be matter a woman who may have been held captive, it could be said by a man or a woman, even a young person, a, a boy or a girl, it could either be her father or her mother, her brother or her sister, their belief. But this woman's son or daughter is not believed. Her daughter, her, her male slave or female slave is not believed. In a different verse, it says, Everyone can te testify about this captive woman that she was not defiled, except for her and her husband. That implies that her slave is allowed to testify. So what is it? Is, the, is her personal slave allowed to testify like the, fir, uh, like the second Brisa? Or is her personal slave not allowed to testify like the first Brisa? So the Rapapi and Rav Ashi Tanaihi. So according to Rapapi and Rav Ashi's opinions, Rapapi was the first one, the first answer. Rapapi says that they were Makel in the case of Shvuya. And Rav Ashi is about her, her uh, personal one. They both definitely have to say that it's a Machlokas Tanai. So they say they have to go according to the second Brisa. And there's Machlokas between the first Brisa and the second Brisa. Rapapa, except for Papa, who gave the the answer that we rely on a shivcha, just not her shivcha. Mile he, he does not have to say that it's a machlokas if we believe the uh, this her slave or not. So Amr al Harapapa, Rapapa would answer Kitanya hahi. When's the second case that we allow? So the first price that says we don't believe. Her shifra, but I guess the second case could be talking about when it's not her shifra. So a slave could be believed. But Rapapi would say, Rapapa would say the second price was talking about a case. But she didn't know that she was giving the testimony. She was just speaking matter of factly. Oh, this happened. That happened. So it gives credibility because she didn't realize that anything was hanging on her words. Iha, the chiyas Rav Dimi Amar, similar to the case when Rav Dimi came to Eretz Yisrael, he said, Rav Chanan Kartin Ga Mishtai. Rav Chana Kartigna. So it's interesting that um, our school translates as Kartigna, that it's from Carthage, which is what was that in, in Greece, one of the city-states of Greece. There's a Carthage in Wisconsin, but that's obviously named after the original one. So either there was uh, uh, Rav Hanan Kartigai said that a certain thing happened to Rabbi Shoban Levi, or some said Rabbi Shoban Levi said that a certain case happened to, for Rabbi Huda Anasi, but Adam Achashem Masilchav Itumo, the Amar and even Imi Nishbeis of Eino of the Kachavim of Pran was talking Masilchav Itumo. Not as testified, we're just saying matter of factly through his innocence. He said, My mother and I were captive by the pagans. When I would go to, to, to get water, I was thinking about my mother. Like it ate him, when I went to gather wood, I was thinking about my mother, meaning that even when he left her, he was keeping watch on her, even from the distance. 
similar, well, a little similar, but different when we said about earlier about the, the soldiers looking at each other from one spot to the next. But here he was making sure that his mother, no one went into where her, his mother was. You see, Rebbe Kunal Peep and Rebbe Yehuda Nasi allowed her to marry a Kohen based on what her son said. Now, this is obviously a case where she was a uh, a widow. She had a son already, so she was a widow. Now, a Kohen's allowed to marry a widow. So we see that even though we don't believe, the first Bryce says we don't believe the son. The first Bryce says we don't believe a son. The second one says you believe everyone except um, she and her husband. So the answer is, is that that second price, at least according to our Papa, is talking about Masih Lefituma. They're Masih Lefituma. We believe everyone except the woman and her, and her husband. But if they're not, if they're saying by witnesses, there are some people who we don't believe, including her kids and her own slaves. Here we are, the mission of the bottom of Hosea and Ahmed Bays, And we are very close to finishing the parak. Hopefully we'll finish the parak next week.